Problems of piecing together the past. Under this, we will discuss about the classification of findings which the archaeologists use to reconstruct the life of the Harappan people. Usually, the archaeologists they try to reconstruct the past on the basis of artifacts recovered or through written records. But even though we have the Harappan script, it is not yet been deciphered, which means the archaeologist still does not know how to read the Harappan script. So as a result, they try to understand the life of the Harappan people on the basis of findings. And findings here can be referred to artifacts which has been recovered by them. And artifacts can be anything which has been found, for example, pottery, tools, ornaments, or ruins of buildings, or anything. Now we will discuss about the classification of findings. So the first classification is on the basis of materials, which means that whenever the archaeologists found any artifacts, they will try to understand the materials of these artifacts, whether this artifact is made of stone or whether it is made of clay or bone or ivory. So they will first classify the materials of the artifacts. The next is they will try to understand the functions of artifacts, whether this artifacts is a tool which is used by the people or is it an ornament which is worn by the people. Third is the archaeologists will investigate the context in which the artifact was found to understand the functions of the artifacts. For example, if an artifact is found in a drain, the archaeologists can make out that particular artifact is used for cleaning the drain. So in this manner, the archaeologists understand the functions of other artifacts as well. Fourth, sometimes archaeologists depend on indirect evidence. For example, there are no traces of cotton. No traces of cotton at some Harpan site. So to know about the fabrics of Harpan clothing, the archaeologists depend on indirect evidence such as figures engraved on sculptures. They will study these figures to understand what kind of fabrics was used by the people. Moreover, the archaeologists have to develop frames of reference to understand the use of artifacts. The archaeologists have to compare the Harappan artifacts with artifacts of other civilization. For example, the first Harappan seal could not be understood until the archaeologists compare the seal found at Mesopotamia. Harappa and Mohenjo-daro planned urban centers. Archaeologists did not discover or found any written record about the Harappan civilization and a number of seals which has been discovered by the archaeologists contain some letters but they remain undeciphered like I've told you the archaeologist still does not know how to read the letters which is engraved on the seal. As a result we have less knowledge about the Harappan culture. In spite of the shortcoming, we still have a rough picture or idea about the Harappan culture formed on the basis of artifacts uncovered by the archaeologists at various places. And this artifact includes ruins of large buildings, dwelling houses, weapons of war, household implements, food materials, dress materials, ornaments, spinning, textile instruments, types of potteries, toys and games, stone figurines which has been discovered by the archaeologists. So these are the artifacts which give us a glimpse of the Harappan life and civilization. Town planning. Under town planning, we will discuss about Harappa and Mohenjo-daro city structure and architecture, about the houses, about the roads and also about their drains. Harappa. Harappa is a ruined city on the bank of River Ravi in Sahilwal district in Pakistan. The remains of Harappa city is similar to the remains of Monjo Daro, which is in terms of architecture and structure. The only difference is that the houses found at Harappa are smaller in size as compared to the houses found at Mohenjo Daro. 
So Mohenjo Daro is known as the place of death because many skeletons were found here. And it is one of the oldest planned city in the world, which is situated in the river Indus in Larkana district in Pakistan, before the coming of the Aryans. Mohenjo Daro was the chief center of social activities of the Indus people. The size of Mohenjo Daro is one square mile in area, but it may be larger than this because the outskirt or the outer layer of Mohenjo Daro was found buried below the mud or silt deposited by the river. The city now stands on two mounds, one is in the north and another is in the south. So in the north, the mound is 400 yards long and 300 yards wide. In the south, the mound is 1,200 yards long and 300 yards wide. And Mohenjo-daro had planned wide street, like a modern city street. So the main road is 33 feet wide and the other streets are 13 and a half feet in breadth. And these streets are aligned from east to west and north to south. They are joined together from east to west and from north to south. And the building regulations are strictly enforced, which means that uh, buildings were prevented from advancing into the streets. So all this shows that there is an existence of some authority to control the development of the city. And this kind of planning was unknown in the Indian city until the 19th century. Laying out drains. Another striking feature of town planning was the drainage system. The drains are made of mortar, lime, and gypsum. It is covered with big bricks, and these big bricks could be lifted easily when they are to clean the drains. The big drains are 2.5 feet to 5 feet in circumference. Smaller drains are joined to the main drains. So smaller drains are drains that runs from the house and it is connected to the main drains that runs through the streets. And for sewage, for dumping of waste, pits are provided on either side of the street. So all this shows that Indus people took great care in keeping their cities neat and clean and it also shows that Indus people have knowledge about sanitation. Domestic Architecture The excavation work done by the archaeologists reveals that buildings were constructed throughout the city with proper planning. Dr. Pulsakar classified the building into three heads, one dwelling houses, b large buildings and c public baths. Dwelling houses means a place where a person lives, and these dwelling houses are built of burned bricks, and each house has its own well and drainage system which is connected to the main drains. And uh, dwelling houses at Mohanjo Daro are of different sizes, ranging from a house with only two rooms to grand big buildings with a size of 220 feet by 115 feet. So these are different features of small buildings and big buildings. So floors of the small buildings are earthen or kacha and the roofs were flat made of woods or thatched with matting and the doors vary from 3 to 7 feet. While at big buildings, they have two or more stories as evident from the beams and the ring staircases and they have paved floors, they have courtyards and narrow stairways and uh, they have also pottery jars and wooden shelf which was used for storing food or utensil and they also have kitchen in the corner of the house which is mainly used for cooking purpose but most of the cookings are done in the courtyard. The Great Bad at Mohanjo Daro The Great Bad at Mohanjo Daro is made of burnt bricks. It is a rectangular tank which has rooms and verandas, galleries on the sides of the Great Bads. It also has two flights of steps in the north and south that leads into the tank. The size of the Great Bad is 12 meter in length, 8 meter in breadth, 2.4 meter in depth. This Great bar is connected to drains and wells for filling the tank purposes and for emptying the tank purposes. So the Great Bad can be found at Mohenjo Daro and Harappa. 
The Great Bad at Harappa is bigger as compared to the Great Bad at Mohenjo-daro. The size of the Great Bad at Harappa is 39 feet in land, 13 feet in breadth, and 8 feet in depth. The Sea Tuttles so the Harappan civilization is divided into two. One is the citadels, the next is the lower town. So the citadel is smaller and higher, which is situated in the western part, and the lower town is bigger and lower, which is situated in the eastern sections. So these citadels vary from city to city because at Mohenjo-daro, the citadels was fortified by walls and separated from the lower towns. But at Dolavira, the entire settlements, the entire settlements was fortified, means the entire settlements was built around by walls. And at Lothal, there was no walls. That means this is the citadels and this is the lower town and there was no fortification around it. Fourth is the collegiate building or assembly hall. So this collegiate building or assembly hall was unearthed at Mohenjo-daro. And uh, it has 20 massive pillars made of clean burned bricks. And these four, 20 massive pillars are arranged in four rows of five each. So for example, this is the four rows. And these are the pillars. And all together, they have 20 massive or big pillars. And this assembly hall also has long corridors with low benches and a main seat. So these assembly halls are usually used for social gatherings or as an assembly hall. The Great Granary at Harappa. The Great Granary at Harappa was the most impressive buildings found at Harappa. The size of the Great Granary is 169 feet by 130 feet and it consists of two similar blocks with an aisle of 23 feet wide. So this is the two blocks which are similar in sizes. And this is the aisle which is 23 feet wide. And this block has six holes alternating regularly with five corridors which means after every hole there is a corridor which opens toward outside and these great granaries serve as government storehouses dockyard at lothal another important structure of the indus valley civilization is the dockyard discovered at lothal which is in gujarat the size of the dockyard is 223 meter in land 35 meter in width and 8 meter in depth. It has an inlet channel. Inlet channel means a passage in the eastern wall and a split way. A split way means a passage for letting out surplus water or extra water. Inlet channel was connected to a river. By each side is a wharf. A wharf means it's a dock. So here the boats and ships come load and unload their goods at dockyard which is in Lothal. So from the above account, we can see that Harappan infrastructure are built with a high degree of perfection. Moreover, the cities were thriving and populous and the people enjoyed good sanitation and the luxuries and comfort of highly developed municipal life which is unknown to other civilizations. For example, when the Indus people were using clean burned bricks, the Egyptians were unaware and the Mesopotamian rarely used it. How do archaeologists identify artifacts? To process the food, the Harappan people used grinders and pots for mixing, blending, and cooking. And these grinders and pots are made of stone, metal, and terracotta, found at various Harappan sites. Under these, we'll discuss about grinders and saddle cones. So grinders and saddle cones are hand-operated tools, meaning they are used manually with their hands. They are made of hard, gritty rocks and sandstone. They are mainly used for the purpose of grinding corns and grains. There are two types of grinders discovered at Harappa. The first one, they push the smaller stone to and fro to use. 
The second, they have an additional stone used for pounding spices and herbs. It is also called as curry stones. Procuring material from the subcontinent and beyond. The Harappan people procure their craft materials in various ways. Materials such as clay are easily found in their own sites, but other materials such as stone, timber, and metals are procured from other places. And the recovery of terracotta toy models also shows that cart was an important means of transportation, both for the people and goods. They also use riverine and coastal routes for transportation purposes. So there are various ways of procuring craft materials. The first one is craftsmen establish settlements in areas where materials are available. So if a person is a shell maker, then they will settle at Nageshwar and Balakot, where shell are found in abundance. This is Nageshwar. The second is they will settle near the source of material. For example, Shortugai is the nearest place to get lapis lazuli. So if a person needs lapis lazuli, then they will settle at Shortugai. And similar example are if a person needs carnelian, then they will settle at Lothal, which is the nearest place to get carnelian. And for steel tie, the person has to settle at Rajasthan and North Gujarat and for metal at Rajasthan. So point number two is they send expeditions to procure raw materials and also to establish links with the local people. So expedition was sent to South India for gold and Khetri region of Rajasthan for copper. Khetri region of Rajasthan was also called as Kangeshwar Jodhpur culture.